Raja Draja. Willem, start talking. Good morning. Four Good score and morning. seven hours ago. <laughs> um, how do we know each other? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we know each other from the clubs and the gigs. The and clubs and the gurgs. The clubs and the gigs. <laughs> yeah. How long have we known each other? Because, you know, I feel like I always have to start this off like, this is my friend that I've known for 6,000 years. We weren't friends till like probably a couple years ago. We, True. It was one of those like, I worshipped from afar and I would pay you at the gigs. I was a door bitch when you were mm. Raja, the queen of the scene, yes. go going and yes, yes, on yes. boxes, making poor choices. That could be, that's that's where we should start. We should talk about like the history of like drag in West Hollywood and our roles in it. Everything was before the fire and after the fire. Before we burned <laughs> down, from all, from all the bitter queens leaving the curling irons on, because we planned it. We said, like, 5 o'clock on Tuesday. Are you allowed to say that? It's been, like, over 10 years. Yeah. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, we burnt that place down. The drag queens did. There's, like, a statute of limitations in telling the stories. Tower Nova, Miss Alana, me, you, yeah. Chakra, Russell. We all just decided to leave our curling irons on one day in the liquor locker and say, let's spark this bitch up. Mm -hmm. Like Angela Bassett and waiting to exhale. Ain't mad. Yeah. Gonna burn your shit though. Yes, God. <laughs> Goodbye. We burnt down Mickey's. <laughs> so really, that's how that's how we know each other is yeah. through Mickey's. Because back in the day in West Hollywood, that's the only real gigs that you could get were go-go dancing. Because there wasn't a ton of drag. People were not worshiping the drag the way they are now. Like, and that was my favorite thing because managing strippers was. I felt like I was in business school. You. You find a niche and fill it, and then you get your niche filled. Well, yeah, you know, that's that's another that's another thing that really kind of glued us together because it was a go-go dancing culture yeah. at the time. It was really like kind of just all about the guys, and then there'd be a sprinkling of drags to kind of add a little bit of color and humor to it. A little novelty, it. so it's not so yeah. much of a bathhouse. They were gay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, there's queens here, and they would mm -hmm. pay us 75 bucks, and I'd have to put on like four different outfits throughout the night. <laughs> and I lived. I remember just being completely just off my fucking rockers at Mickey's, just whiskey drunk, throwing shot glasses at the wall. Every Sunday, sitting at the door, I'd be like, what's she gonna show up in this week? Because <laughs> Sundays is the day where you had the time to like make a new outfit and do some shit. Oh yeah. Like Wednesday, it would just be like, I'm gonna wear what I wore Sunday, or the mm -hmm. Sunday before that. Type. No, we got into it. We yeah, you like, guys were good. But yeah, you were like the little cunty door girl. That's how we know each other. Yeah. So we live in West Hollywood. We do. You live on a street with so many drag queens. Well, this whole fucking neighborhood is all drag queens. I mean, we can name them. We can list them all one at a time. That's why it's so accessible and easy for me to do this, because the queens are either in town for something or they all fucking live here. Yeah, it seems like everybody either moves to the east or the west, yeah. New York or, or L.A. Are you from here? No, I'm from Philly. I'm really? Yeah, when I was 18 or 19. Uh, which was only like three years ago? Yeah, well, two and a half. It was a leap year. <laughs> <laughs> leap year. It's fucking leap years. They're good for the skin. <laughs> yes, West Hollywood. We've known each other since I moved here in 1999, and you, you were a Mac girl with Miss Kimber. I remember that. I was a Mac girl, Kimber. Yeah, um, Kelly Carlson, the bitch from Nip Tuck. Yes. And I told her that on set after you told oh, me. Oh, shut and, up. And she was like. She was so shady, that's like because funny, I knew her. I knew her survival like, job. That's right. You had such a huge role on Nip Tuck, and and uh, and she was. I can, you know, I didn't really watch Nip Tuck, but I I because I just was she uh, at was the time. Flawless. I might have. Yeah, she was great. The, the scenes that I saw with you guys in it, she was pretty fucking. I flawless. felt so booger down clown whenever I had to be around her in drag because they wouldn't let me wear enough makeup because they wanted it like you know, passable, trans like attempt, but like yeah. obvious. That's a man still. Yeah. I remember that at the time, too, we would get tons of like auditions and stuff, and I'd always end up at auditions with you and knew I just wouldn't get the role because you're just, you know, <laughs> you were that for like you and was, Jasmine. Uh, me, me and you Black the, Jasmine. Yeah, you were the white girl and she was the black girl, and you guys always got the roles and you auditioned. Yeah, tell us about some of the acting roles. I mean, you did mention a lot of it on Drag Race. You did name drop quite a bit, which is, a, which is one of my favorite well, things about Everybody you. like talks about their life, and that was mine. And it was one of those things where I didn't realize all these people aren't from here, you know? Because here it's like, what are you doing? Let's go out tonight. And you just say, oh, I have an early call. And you can't. If you say, I have an early call to someone, they'll think you're on the phone. But if you say it in LA, it means I have to be on set, you know? I got to go to work. Yeah, so I guess I wasn't aware of my own douchebaggery. Now I am, and I love it. But you know what? I, uh, I, I kind of found myself in the same situation, too, because I had already been on reality TV. 
and I had like kind of worked in the industry for a bit, so yeah. I kind of I kind of had a different understanding or a different. Uh, Oh, you know what I mean. Yeah, you just you know your way around the set. Exactly. I'm like I knew that it was called craft service and not craft, the, not yeah. the food pile or where yeah. the chips at. Like, <laughs> you know, I knew that. The I, way the chip at table. If I wanted to ba if I wanted a bagel, I would ask for one from the craft service. Mm -hmm. Elegance. 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 Yeah. You know, and I knew you know where the cameras were, and I knew all the terminology that was mm -hmm. used for it. I know what a boom operator was. You know, I remember, some of these bitches I remember did not telling know. the camera, hey, I'm about to go over there and read Jiggly. And it was, it was amazing, and I'm glad they, uh, they caught it. It was that little nurse scene. Nurse but, scene? Yeah, I explained what nurse meant, and the whole drag lingo. Because I was really into the drag lingo 2011 when we filmed, because I had just been friends with like Erica and Crystal and all the Dallas girls from S4 and Jenna and Edna. Oh, yes. Asia, those bitches who like talk and they have the slang. And like, they were, that's where I learned House Down Boots. I didn't know where the fuck this pair of boots that everyone else was talking about for a full week when I met them. I'm like, boots? What do they'd be you like, mean? They would just be like, um, did you go to the store? Boots. Cool. I'd be like, boots? <laughs> like, they would just, boots would be just an affirmative type of um, yeah. interjection in anything. And I was like, where are these fucking boots? Well, they're in the house. Down. Yeah. And it's down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, uh, where have you been recently? I just did Tokyo. Tokyo? You're like the first girl to ever go to Tokyo. Yeah. Is it there fun. a following there? Like, do people Huge. watch us watch there? It was the most people that were ever in the club, they said. Well, people, we're, we're big in Japan. Are you big in Japan? Yeah, I don't know. American Apparel had the shirts and it worked out. Oh, American Apparel. Yeah. The thing is, the, the fans overseas are so passionate about the show because they have to go to great lengths to watch us, like, illegally download shit, do, like, um, ISP converters or some shit or AR something piece. I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, like they have to like fool the internet into thinking I'm in America and then they get like the feed or whatever. I'm not like a hacker or nothing, but they really have to go to great lengths to w watch Drag Race. And so when we come, they worship. Yeah, they I've noticed gifts. that, but I just, I just didn't know what sort of great lengths they had to go through because I'm not a very computer like savvy person. You know, I'm just unaware of it. Yeah, I'm bad at technology too. That's so why you hire people. Hookers? You just did some stuff for American Apparel. You mentioned that with um, Alaska and Courtney. That's awesome. I'm really jealous. It's on my pants. I can't ever wear my own t-shirt, so I just like cut shit up and use it as patches. Oh my god, it's, it is all over your pants. Yeah. And then in the back, I got a patch. Because I feel like it's real blatant to wear your own merchandise. Yeah. And that's why you can wear it subtly, unless you're in the gym. You know what those pants are giving me? They're giving me Kits on 2000. Like, yeah, remember Great Wall of China? Great Wall of China. And girl. everything was like $700 pants. You're like, what? You're like, wait, they just backed that stitch back and forth like uh -huh. 600 times and yep. put some coins on it. No, these I got from a thrift store and did all that bullshit myself. See, because we, we were there then. We were that's there. That's what we had to do. In the 2000s. You you're like, really, bitch, you're going to put a safety pin? So can I. Yeah. What's your favorite place to travel to right now? I loved Iceland. Iceland. Iceland was fucking. God, you get to go like to all the. I mean, I get. I mean, I've got to go to some fun places, sure, but. It's because of the, the YouTube, uh, and I, it helped me. You know, people mm, discovered gotcha. my YouTube before they did Drag Race. Sometimes, um, Iceland was beautiful. It was like the opposite of Vegas. Like all that artificial man-made beauty. Like Iceland was just stark, and they shot Prometheus there, so everything was like gray and like. The water was toothpaste crest light blue. It was the most beautiful thing. White mud, thermal springs. What? Yeah. A Bjork video. It was so beautiful. And God, the men. I've always the men are to go tall. There. I ate whale. Um, are, we, are we still talking about the men? <laughs> yeah, she ate whale. All right, sperm whale. Then she has a mammal too. Yes. Sick fuck. Yeah. That's awesome though. How long were you in Iceland? Uh, I was there actually like four days because that was a weekend after I had been like everywhere else and you know how you have to spend like the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday somewhere mm. before if you're over in Europe and then you start doing the gigs again like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. It was one of those and so I got to really hang out there and like discover it. It was rad. I had this God, great hot amazing. tour guide. I, as soon as I saw him I was like ooh and then he opened his mouth and you're like why do you got to be a bottom? How did you know? Girl. Oh. 
It sounds the same in Iceland? Yes, it's just like pearls falling out of your mouth. But just more like elfin pearls. Yeah. He was fine Fuck. though. He was probably a little versatile. Do you still remember how to pronounce his name? Magnus. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. That's not very Icelandic at all. He sounds like he's like from like Ireland. His last name is a fucking rim job of a tongue twister. I could not do it. Ooh. I could probably eat pussy easier than say his last name. Ugh. Oh, Sorry, I'm now girl. I'm grossed out. I, I, need, I, I know to you're eating break. breakfast. <laughs> I'm eating breakfast. I've had three chips. Be careful, Willem. <laughs> Have you ever been with a woman, Willem? Uh-huh. I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, have you ever had sex with a woman? Uh, yeah. It was, um, it felt like when you got a little bit of spaghetti and you want to put it in a container and then put the lid on it and then mix it up so the sauce gets all over it. Oh, my God. Like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Um, so it was like fucking a bowl of cold spaghetti? Was it warm spaghetti? No, it was, you just microwaved it. It was probably leftover. It was like... <laughs> yeah. I've eaten pussy. I mean, you do that at Ooh. after parties. You still? No, I've d not, not recently. God, no. What color are your eyes? Are, you like are they blue? Green? Mm -hmm. I don't know. They always change. Blue, green. Green. Um, <laughs> green? Yeah, I remember doing the alphabet with my tongue, eating a woman out. I was just uh, like, I was like, I need to make a good effort and like stay down here for at least like a minute or two. So I was like, uh, bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> And then I'm like, let me do it in cursive. <laughs> ah! So I did that. Oh my God. But you kind of have to eat out a girl in like high school to pass health, you know? It's like part of social sciences. Tell us about the Russian you dated that you took to Sizzler. No, dear, that's a, that's in the book. That's oh, gonna come later. That story was so good. <laughs> this country. <laughs> oh, what a country! <laughs> He's probably gonna be watching this and be like, "You fucking bitch." One of the Gogo -Go boys that I, uh, quote unquote, managed, I ended up in bed with him, and his name was Jan. And oh, he was like, know him? "Remember him?" No, wait. Oh, God, he was beefy. The foreign guys always would wear the worst underwear. Oh, yeah. Like the three-pack from Kmart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, no, you need to go next door and get some cute drawers. Yeah. And what I love about foreign men is that when you, whenever you're in the bathroom with them, they're always fascinated by the amount of water in the toilet. Always. It doesn't matter if they've been here for like 20 years. They're like, there is so much water in the toilet. What a country. Can't wait for that Neptune's kiss. <laughs> I am, I'm so sometimes afraid to talk about my bowels on this like series, but Why? when we people actually know up. me, like when people are actually my friends, they'll know how obsessed I am with my bowels. Like every other like, you know, topic and conversation will always be about how my insides are moving. I talk about it a lot because yeah. it can inform your whole day. Like, I don't want to go to the show. Why not? I got to take my clothes off and take a shit. You well, know, like the good ones where you want to like take everything off. Then maybe like get a shower after. Then you can go out. Oh yeah, I love to poop naked. Me too. And then shower. God, it's know. so good. And then a shave. Shit, shave and shower. There's something to be. Read an old Playgirl from 2013. Oh my God. Look at a National Geographic. Maybe a Us Weekly. I've got I've got um, a travel and leisure magazine that I like nice. to look at and fantasize about where I'm gonna go next while I'm fucking ripping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just, do, you ever, yeah. do you ever have to lean over on one leg? Um, yes. I mean, those are like okay days, but when you arch your back, that's when it's, when you, when you know. Girl, this is going to sound stupid, but have you ever faced the wall while you were pooping instead <laughs> of the front? A well, reverse, a reverse cowgirl on toilet. I did it when I didn't want to untuck my dick, but I had to like get access to my butthole because mm -hmm. I butt chug on stage during this one song. Right. Um, so I needed to squirt the champagne out after, and I forgot, you can't shit without peeing too a little bit. It's like trying to like put mascara on with your eyes shut oh, yeah, or yeah, yeah. with your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. So I literally like pissed my tuck. It was really bad. And I was wearing leopard, but nobody could tell because the pattern was. Honey, you're wearing leopard right now. That must've been like a few minutes ago. No, it was in England. Oh, work. And yeah. she's like, no, it was in England. It was a small ass club bathroom out by Heathrow, zone three. I don't, you know, I'm not a big, I'm, I've, I've just kind of given up on tucking. I know that some queens love to tape. You're a taper. Yeah. I just put on a tight panty and a few pairs of tights, and I'm cool. See, I would I do that when I can, but 
Well, the tight panty, I don't like panty lines. And when I wear like leger dresses and stuff, or mm -hmm. bandage, anything body conscious, and you can see that line and the dent mm. from like a pantyhose or a really tight panty, that it doesn't fly to me. It's like right. it's like wearing a stocking with a closed toed shoe. It's like, no. Wait, a stocking with a closed toed shoe. Yeah, I just can't do it. It ruins the illusion for me. Because all I got is from the neck down. So it needs to be right. Oh, okay. Yeah, she a neck down queen. She, she a, a cross the street queen. Like, yeah, she looks good. Then you get a pose. Well, yeah, that's still a man. <laughs> but from across the street, it's like, yes, work. You know, that's, that's part of the, uh, you know, when, you, when you've been doing this for a while, you start to realize what you actually look like. And you're like, yeah. okay, I get it. Yeah. And, you know, and, and now being public figures and people are trying to call us out on shit. And it's like, dude, I fucking get it. I'm I know where girl. my problem areas are, son. Yeah, I'm not an actual girl. I know I've got a weak yeah. chin and I'm kind of goofy looking. I know, and I've I, got enough chin for three of us. You know, it, <laughs> it's just, it's part, of the, it's part of the process. I mean, like, uh, the, the artistic process, the creative process, is just realizing what you look like, especially as an entertainer, mm -hmm. you know? Just realizing where your flaws are and making a joke out of some of it, you know? Some queens take them real serious. Some queens really need to learn that. I go yeah. on Facebook and I look at pictures of queens. I'm like, you're not at that level. You're not at that place yet. Mm. It's not even a level. It's just you just got to get to a place and know what you look like. They're just crazy? painting how they think they're supposed to paint how, because yeah, that's yeah. how they, they see it on the internet and their friends do it. Exactly. Instead of painting for their face. That's another thing. There's a lot of bitches looking alike. I mean, I talk about this all the time, but... It's getting worse and worse. And yeah, then, you never look the same. You're always doing something different. Well, I know what my uniform is now, and that's, I think that's just because you, know, you get to a certain age and you're like, okay, this looks great on me. And I try to be somewhat age appropriate. I don't want to be that like 50-year-old queen that's still doing like, the really like, you know, boppy young music. Yeah, like when um, certain girls do Frozen and they're well into their 40s. It's uh, mutton. <laughs> it's mutton dressed as lamb. <laughs> Mut I'm like, you ain't nobody's princess Elsa. We were talking about this yesterday. Yes, we were. We were. We were like, no, this is. What did you call it? Uh, frozen. Frozen 2000. Frozen 3020. Frozen cryogenic. Yeah, like in, yeah the cryogenic. It's not yeah. even frozen. It's cryogenic. Yeah, I mean. that was the best. Because <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna put it back to life once once the technology is there. Yeah. Ooh, Elsa's <laughs> grown up and she's back. The reckoning. <laughs> the reckoning. She bringing the ice. Part two. Ooh, like remember that. Um, the Cutting Edge Part Two. What's the Cutting Edge? That ice skating movie where they did the Pamchenko. That move where they threw the bitch and then a one-eyed hockey player, DB Sweeney. This movie was everything. Moira Kelly you in the eighties. You completely lost me. It was everything. But I'm sure somebody listening will know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm just, no, I don't know. What are you talking about? It was a really good <laughs> ice skating movie. And, and he threw the bitch at the end, and he caught her, and everybody Oh, yeah, cheered. he was a hockey player. Yeah, with one eye, bitch. Yes, God. Acting like I'm crazy, like you ain't got showtime. Bitch, yes, God. Yes, God. <laughs> I do remember that. Um, how old are you? 32. 32. What's your sign? Cancer. Well, that's fierce. Yeah. Um. I don't know nothing about astrology, except... Cancers are supposed to like their home. Yo, you, you have a nice home. I like your home. It's a good little party house. I'm getting my kitchen redone for free. 99% Oh, it's, hap it's actually sure. happening? Yeah. She, she texted me this morning. I'm so excited. I want to get a swing put in it. In your kitchen? Yeah, like somehow like those like glass globe chairs. It, a swing is such a good idea anywhere. Who wouldn't want to sit on a swing? If you went into a house and said, oh, swings, down. <sighs> Actually, I stayed at a house at these um, at these two guys. That like, was a bathhouse girl. Well, no, they uh, these two guys that owned like the only bathhouse in Pittsburgh. <laughs> See, I knew it was a bathhouse. <laughs> but these two guys that I stayed with, and I often stay with them. I'm not gonna. Did it have a lot of glass names. block and stuff? Uh, no, but the house was completely made of glass. Like it was all glass, at, and it kind of looked over over Pittsburgh. I want to stay there next time. You should. And they would love you because they have a fucking dance floor in, in their, their kitchen. House? In the kitchen. Where the dining room should be, like, next to it. There uh -huh. is a dining room. There's a dance floor. And with a full DJ system. I want a booking. And we had a late night party there. Can and you I stayed at gig? their house. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can call somebody. We can call a... Uh, that's any, that's house party jam. It is totally house party jam, but 
Um, so maybe you should put a dance floor and a DJ. No, your house no. is cute. Your house is like, your house is like, it is very homey. Like you like your live-in space. It's comfortable, it's clean, you know, which is probably what people may not expect from you. No, I guess they would. Yeah, I'm You're not bougie. A, I'm, yeah, I'm not a clutter person though. Yeah. Got a couple nice things and that's it. Do you love animals? I do. Are you an animal lover? I ate horse in Japan. Shit. For Why real. do you say things like that? You just like throw it I out there. I will put anything the in my fuck? mouth. Anything goes in my mouth. I'm the top of the food chain. It's the only thing I top. I've never... I, that's a thing in Japan? Yeah, you can eat horse. My little pony up in my mouth. I, I tried it. I wasn't not going to try it. I couldn't. It I'm starting fine. to feel weird about Girl, pig, we eat too. ass. We eat ass. We I can know. eat horse. I know, but... Or taste it, at least. Ass can't talk back. Or yes, yes it, it does. Can. <laughs> we'll when see. it's real happy. Mm -hmm. Toot toot. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is the nastiest conversation I've ever had with the queen on <laughs> and Sorry. This is kind of... Scandalizing the children. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but I've been thinking about the guilt that I have for eating pig because there's, people have been putting so many pig videos on, on, um, on uh, uh, Facebook. Like Don't cute. talk about my acting reel like that. <laughs> no, like cute little like miniature pigs and oh, pigs yeah. in sweaters. And, and then I heard that pigs are actually like the fourth smartest animal, dolphins being the first. Well, if they were really smart, they'd grow some fucking thumbs. Well, maybe we haven't given them an opportunity because we keep eating. We keep eating them and farming them without thumbs. Maybe they were supposed to have thumbs. And you know what? I also heard. I heard chickens don't have beaks anymore and claws. At KFC. Exactly. They're yeah. delicious, though. They really are. I mean, who eats the beaks? <laughs> <laughs> you make a nice soup or a broth, maybe. <laughs> no, but I've been thinking about stop eating pork and then eventually maybe oh. stop eating meat altogether. But I just love meat. Me too. Pork belly is actually my favorite food. Well, I can't do that fatty stuff. I know, you're very particular about that. Which, you know, will bring us to the next part of our conversation, which I've always appreciated about you, is that you really take good care of yourself. Oh, yeah. I treat my body like Gandhi, Monday through Friday, and then like a French gutter, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. So it's, a, it's all about balance. And you don't drink a lot. No, I'm not. Well, the thing I used to, my mm -hmm. grandma owned a bar, so I grew up drinking, and I was always allowed to try stuff. Uh -huh. Like, the rationale was, it's got fruit in it, it's blackberry brandy, let them try, you know? Your grandmother had a bar in Philly. Yeah, my grandma and grandpa owned a bar in Philly. That's why I think I um, can talk to Are they to still anybody. alive? No, they're dead. Yeah. They sound um, cool as fuck. They were though. rad. I liked them. Um, but I would try anything, and then I realized I don't really like the taste of alcohol, but I like being drunk. Mm. So then when I started doing more drag, I would just do shots because mixers get you fat, and you have to untape or untuck and go through the hose. And if you take your hose down, you always lose a nail. So I would just do shots so I wouldn't have to pee. Well, see, I don't think people really take into account the caloric intake of alcohol because I consume a lot of alcohol, I'm not going to lie. I love to have a good time. It's one of my favorite things to do. But you're really good at it, too. To, of course, I've been doing it for a while. And you always I, carry sunglasses in case it goes like, you know, somebody it, wants a picture or something and you're like, can't make the sober face no more. Yeah, because one eye is shut and it's yeah. like, yeah, it's gross. But, um, you know, uh, but people don't realize that, you know, there's different levels of like, calories and fucking alcohol yeah. like the if darker you drink a, stuff. the darker stuff yeah it's like you know having a jack and coke is like eating a fucking slice of cheesecake and they're like raja why are you so skinny i'm like just because i drink the lighter colored stuff like you know like um vodka another good option is crystal piss because it's fun oh and God. it's got that it's got that kick and the it's oh my god You know what? I was kind of worried. I was like, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to You said be that last time you painted my face, too. Yeah. Like in the middle, I, step back <laughs> and like, okay, I was worried. Is that the truth? Did I say that? Yeah. Well, I had to, I had to go back and like think about it because I, you know, some, some people have a certain paint to their face. So I can like Milk or Raven or mm -hmm. Chad Michaels or uh, Tammy Brown. I don't have anything distinctive. Yeah, yours is not distinctive and yours is a, it's a, it's a character thing and a personality yeah. thing, which is, you know, there's a lot to be said about that. That's Pretty much I'm smiling a lot because I'm really happy. Like, if I'm at a club and I'm smiling, it's genuine. Like, I had the best job in the world. I made my body and face a coloring book, 
and then I just get to fucking go out and party every night. It's so much yeah. fun. We have the best job. We do have the best job. Like we don't have to deal with like HR ever or like dress code. I'm, I think I'm, I'm, last time I checked, I'm HR negative. <laughs> We're talking about the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'm going to make you as fair faucet because I think you're very fair faucet. Yeah. You're very Minim sunny. Minimal talent, but can really get far. I don't think your talent is minimal at all. I think you're a great singer. You get it done. Yeah. Do you get to perform at home a lot? We used to do Hamburger Mary's a lot together. Not really. Um, I do bingo for the legendary bingo charity thing like once or twice a month, and that's something I'll probably never give up just because it makes me feel good about myself. I'm, I'm helping charities. Like, we all know I'm going to hell for all the butt fucking and drinking and back talking, but <laughs> I'd like to at least get a nice, like, the economy comfort on the way there. I, you know what I like, I just what I love about being home is just like kind of connecting to what I used to do. Yeah, and then seeing yeah. all the people mm -hmm. that like you like grew up around. Yeah. You want to apologize to them? I do, because I was like, God, I was ugly. All those pictures we took together, I'm really sorry. Yeah, I don't apologize anymore. I had to apologize to a few people, to a few queens. They're like, God, Roger, you were a total asshole. No, you like, weren't. Maybe, you maybe were always was. so nice. Well, to you, but... Maybe I have some, never some queens I was just kind of there's like, certain girls that on the road because as soon as you get in a car the promoters love to start chit chatting about the other girls and who did what mm, yeah and there's certain girls that you never hear bad stuff about and you're Am one, I one of them you're one of them Juju B Nina um, who else Latrice oh yeah Latrice is like a saint yeah Latrice can can't do no wrong yeah certain oh, girls Latrice. are just the untouchables. Um, what is a typical day of Willem here in LA? What are you going to do after this? Usually I'm doing pre-production or post-production every day for something. My rule is spend at least an hour on your career every day, no matter what. If it's writing, if it's doing editing, if it's coming up with okay. stuff or recording. Because, I mean, no one's going to work harder for you than you. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's one of those things that the time just passes so easy. Oh, you went on a hike, then you went to the wig store. Yeah. Oh, and then you, you um, worked out a little bit. And you got coffee, and then it's like, oh, the day is gone. But no, bitch, you still have to work. Yeah. And I always, I wanted to go out last night when Anthony said he's going out, but I was like, I have to edit, and I want to pop this big zit on my lips. So I got to do both. Yeah. Um, What's a day like for you? I'm really no, trying I to. I'm really trying to adopt more of that. I think I overthink shit, and like a lot of my friends that are, you know, and doing what we do because now I feel like this is an industry now. You mm -hmm. know, it's a new thing. And we're part of it, and we're sort of like the pioneers, and if not leaders of it. So I should definitely put more into it. But I can't, I'm not going to lie to you. I get I get discouraged, you know, and I kind of like sit there and question myself constantly. And I think that's it's it's safe to say that because I think a lot of people feel like that. Yeah. Know? Every time I do something, I wonder: Are people going to watch this, mm -hmm. and why? <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's good. Like you have this show now, and the Tutor to Buddha is. The show that I make, if it's if I see the link, I click it. Just because A, I want to see if I'm ever on it, and B, <laughs> I I loved hearing what you guys say because it's honestly what everybody thinks. Like, yeah, bitch is in a bathing suit with a belt and an overlined lip trying to look like Raven, you know? And uh, again. Some, sometimes only Raven can pull that off. Yeah. It's one of those things where I think they've really found the the sweet spot for that show. I uh, you know that's fun, and the, the cool thing about living here in LA is that we get to kind of just you know, do this, because everyone lives here, and yeah. you know, we all have pretty close-knit relationships and know each other pretty well. Yeah, who do you hate? Who do <laughs> I hate? Oh, I'm not going to say names. I just, I don't really hate anyone, especially from Drag Race. A couple of them hate I, me, I'm sure. Of it yeah, and I think a couple of them hate me as well. Yeah, which is fine. That's fine. That's just the way the world is, you know. And there's so many of us now. And there's even new ones too. There's now like coming. eighty. I'm excited. Of us. Season seven. I haven't. Are you gonna watch it? Did you um, watch last season? Courtney said, "Watch these couple episodes so I can talk to you about something if you want to remain my friend." So I watched. <laughs> I was her venting board, and I watched a couple of them. But I'm not. A, I never really watch TV. I don't even know how to turn on the TV in my home. I yeah, you know, when we're at your house, I never see you sit down to watch TV. Like, you always, I, like... I, growing up, I wasn't allowed to watch... I was allowed to watch an hour a week. And, like, no Simpsons, no MTV, nothing, like, bad or secular. Um, so I never really got into was, TV. But was it kind of religious? 
Um, no, my parents were just, I was fat. I was really fat. Ooh, and they wanted me is, to go outside and play. We didn't have Nintendo. This is a good Nintendo. interview too right here. Talk about being fat. Yeah, I was fat and slutty. A wicked combination. <laughs> This is looking cute. I was, you know, I, it's like, I just jump into these. I'm like, can I do it? You painted me for my headshots in 2005. Oh in 2005, you came to my house and like it was, it was oh, that's my right. old house. You're old. And house. in the middle of it, you were like, you, you step back a little bit and she's like, you're actually a little pretty. And I was like, <laughs> thank you. <Yeah. laughs> I think I need to do a Kickstarter for my beatdown show because I can't afford it anymore. They are expensive, and that's what yeah. people need to realize. It's like, you yeah. know, they're like, why don't you do more of this, and why don't you do more of this? Because we all have to fund it ourselves, and the money yeah. just doesn't miraculously Well, we don't appear. have to fund it ourselves. There's, like, like, that, exactly. That exactly. country artist, Steve Grand, mm -hmm. he came out as gay and then got like 160000 for his album, and I haven't heard the album since. I haven't heard a hit single, so I'm like, if my fans gave me one hundred and sixty grand for an album, I better fucking hear a worldwide hit. You know? Yeah. And I haven't heard Bub Kiss from him. And, you know, it just, it grates me when I'm like, you took off your shirt and you sang a country song and then people gave you money all of a sudden. It's like, I've been working for a while and I've yeah. done everything on my own. And that makes some of my own outputs more gratifying, I guess. Yeah. No, there is, there's a lot to be said about I that. I got fucked yeah. by so many guys before I wrote Boys About Him. That was like a labor of love. <laughs> It worked. Yeah. You know, you put a lot of dedication into that, you know? You had to do research. And douche. What does that feel like to put champagne in your butt? Well, it depends if it's flat or cold. I know what it's like to put cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. No. Only, just kidding. <laughs> um, if it's cold, the bubbles feel a little stingy, but mm -hmm. like a good kind of stinging. Mm -hmm. If it's warm and flat, it's fine. Um, but it just, in a couple minutes, like literally like two or three minutes, you go like, whoo, because you get drunk so quick because it enters right into your bloodstream. Uh, does anything come back out or do you? Yeah, like the, the water. Ew, is that, uh, is that okay for your like, cause you know we are, ooh, wait, what? You so mean like what does the, it come out like? Does it, do it comes out as champagne. I mean, my ass is always like pristine anyway. I have a self-cleaning model, like a Kenmore. I, I was good. I told myself no fisting till 40. <laughs> it's one of those things where if you start doing it too soon, you're going to get, you know, you're, you're only going to have fun once a year at Folsom, and that's it. Yeah. And you, you know, destroy and the, the rest of your social life. This, and my this, butthole is social. There, I do, I kind of, I feel a lot, I mean, I'm 40 now, so maybe I should start fisting today. Yeah, girl. Today. It's the year of the fist. <laughs> but, you know, I, I've always thought that. I'm like, you know what, if you are doing that and you're a pretty young person. Yeah. Damn, what's it going to be like when you're like 40 and 50 and, you know, yeah. I just think it's just, you've got to find another pastime, honestly. you got to stop. Take your, you got to take your mind off of the, the fist and the sex and find a real good hobby yeah. and an interest. And I mean, the only difference I between four <laughs> fingers and fisting is the thumb. So, I mean, you don't have to just, you know, if you just know your limits and say, I'm not going to do the thumb. You know, it's just responsible, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Uh, That's usually the inner conversation that I have a lot. It's like, you know, not the thumb. Yeah. I do the thumb, it's all over with. Yes! I can't stop doing that. And it, it's, it kills me that I do that. Yes! I can't stop. You're, well, a, um, you're a diamond crown queen, you're allowed. Really? Yes, I, bitch. It's so annoying and I love it. <laughs> and I love, yes, God. Thank Girl, you, Lagonda I'm learning how, I'm learning how to tongue pop and it is my new favorite thing. Latrice gave me this medicine to help me do it. What and, medicine is that? Um, it's uh, artisanal. It's, <laughs> it's homeopathic. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> but it makes the pop so sick. Okay, go for it. The oh, I can't do it on. Well, you need the medicine. Mm. Yeah, no. I did it good outside. We had a good pop outside. It's harder with gum too. Mm mm. Well, um...
2015. Oh, I thought you were going to write $20. I'm like, I'm not buying your, your poster, girl. Yeah. This ain't no meet and greet. Yeah. Yeah. It's the year of the yes. <laughs> 2015. Actually, 2014 might have been the year of the yes. Or 2015 will be the year of the fist. <laughs> year of the fist. <laughs> I should have put you like with your fist up, like. This is the <laughs> longest signature card ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can have it. You get to keep them. Nah, -uh, so, really? Yeah, this is totally yours. Wait, hold on. I gotta add a little bit more twinkle to the eye. We should sell it for cancer babies or something. We People could. would buy this on eBay. We can do this as a charity thing. Let's do it. No, I want to keep this shit. No, you should keep it. Yeah, and then I'm gonna get cancer eventually with all the tanning. Okay. <laughs> 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 That's here. Thank you so much, Willem, for sitting here. Um, Bye. Thanks for giving me a ride. <laughs> no problem, girl. <laughs> I really needed it. We would have gotten here super late. Thanks we for making me pretty. Love you, girl. Talk to TYL. Me. Me. Did you hear the news? RuPaul's DragCon is the first ever drag convention in history. Go to RuPaul'sDragCon.com for tickets and all the tea you need to know.